to Republican Governor Bob McDonnell of Virginia, who says, well, it's not good timing. Um, never is with these markets, I guess. It's always problematic for, for any president any time to leave when, when it seems like the lights are going out on Wall Street. What would you do if you were president, Governor? Governor, can you hear us? Oh, Neil, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, so good to... Well, I don't These markets leave you shell-shocked, obviously. But, uh, no, <laughs> I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, I mean, you know, there is a criticism that the president shouldn't be going off to vacation right now. The same could be said of the Republican House, that it shouldn't be out now in this month when everything's hitting the road and, and, and the Senate as well. Uh, but what do you do? Well, it's, I don't begrudge him for taking a vacation with his, uh, his kids. Uh, he's certainly uh, entitled to do that regardless of the timing. The problem is... He's just starting to talk seriously about a jobs program after three years. I mean, that was the issue uh, when he got elected. And instead, he talked about reforming health care and social policy and other things that weren't the top priority for Americans. And uh, he should have been on top of that and spending and deficits uh, from day one. So that, that's the problem, uh, not the vacation today. But what if this has gone beyond just whether we have jobs or not? Very important, the, the crux of any recovery, as you've stated in the past, Governor. But now we've got a financial crisis building here that banks, we thought, had gotten over a lot of their problems. Uh, certainly abroad indications, maybe not. And this is now bigger than the president, bigger than any of the leaders in Europe. Just, just a whole world nightmare. What do you think? Well, I think it's a crisis of confidence. Uh, the polls that you see with uh, people's confidence in the president and Congress and in financial institutions is, is near historic lows. And I think uh, part of it is this president's laid out no coherent strategy on reducing deficits, on creating jobs, on having a national energy policy. And now what we're hearing is the jobs plan is going to be more spending, more stimulus, and that's what got us into the problem. Look, everybody knows uh, if you want to get something done, you've got to cut taxation, regulation, unionization, and litigation. I mean, those are the things that stymie the recovery, and he's not doing any of that. I mean, it's what we've done in Virginia. I announced the $545 million budget surplus today. Unemployment's down to 6%. It's working for us in Virginia. I think they could learn a little bit from what governors are doing in the states. Your state is an exception to a general cross country rule right now where folks are in a heap of trouble, Republicans and Democrats. And I'm wondering, as we take a look at all these stocks and sectors that were hit hard today in the markets, whether the markets are getting ahead of you, uh, Governor, not you specifically, but of Washington, more to the point, and saying, we're worried. We're, we're losing confidence that, that this slowdown isn't something worse. Well, here's the problem. Washington's broke, and, and there's been bipartisan overspending and overpromising for decades. And now the bills are due, 14 trillion, heading towards 22, 100 percent of GDP uh, represented by debt. It's, it's unsustainable and, frankly, immoral for the kids and the grandkids. So we've got to have tough decisions that need to be made to ratchet back dramatically discretionary spending, reform entitlements, and just look the American people in the eye and say, like, we cannot afford this level of spending anymore. Until we do that, there's no end in sight to the bleeding and the markets, and the citizens are not going to have confidence in the government. That's, that's just got to be done. All right, Governor, thank you very much. Good, good seeing you again.